Hello, hi everybody, Merry Christmas. This is Thekla Petridou, a Greek psychologist, YouTuber and author. And this is our weekly video in English. Our video should be uploaded yesterday, that it was the 25th of December 2020, because I, uh, I upload the videos every Friday. But since it was Christmas yesterday, and I was uh, having a, a, a Greek Christmas, with all the food and people around and everything, I am uploading this video today. Today's subject is very interesting. The, the inspiration for this uh, video was um, drawn from an email I received just today from, from one of my uh, Greek viewers, a lady who decided to finish her relationship in Christmas and she wrote this beautiful letter to her ex and the title the title is my dear ex this christmas the same topic will be uh, uploaded tonight in greek for for uh, for uh, the greek people on the channel i just make the english version now to be uploaded this afternoon and tonight we will have the same version in greek this lady uh, wrote to me my dear Thekla, I'm again writing to you after two years. Two years ago, she wrote an email about um, lost self-confidence and loneliness. This lady is around 55 years old. She lives in Greece. She's not married. She's single. She used to live with her uh, late mother. Her mother passed away recently. And two years ago, she, saw, she wrote an email to me talking about herself being lonely and having low self-esteem. And we made a video at that time, two years ago. Dear Thekla, two years ago, we are here again. You are always in my life because I watch your videos uh, very often. And I still admire you, love you, and appreciate you too much. And you uh, continue to be my psychology teacher. Thank you, honey. I have news. I made a relationship with a man who is 17, year, 17 years younger than me. And from the first moment, he showed that he had a problem with our age difference. He's 70 years younger than you. 17 years younger than you. And because I'm already in menopause and he's just under 30, under 40, he expressed to me that he would love to have his own family. Our relationship began a year ago. We have a lot of commonalities on the ways of think on, the, on our ways of thinking on the way on our, the way we enjoy life. We love we love books, the movies, um, going trips around, wine, good food. We had a very very big we had very big chemistry. I mean, you understand? I'm translating from Greek. We had huge chemistry in our bodies, and we, ha we had wow sex. <laughs> That's good for a relationship, to have good chemistry and have wow sex, but it's not enough. And you write this, but this was not enough, because the convictions a person has do not allow him or her to enjoy life and to have gratitude about the gift that came into his hands and into his, lives, into his life. You mean that your relationship was like a gift coming from heaven into his hands, but he could not enjoy it, enjoy it because he was prejudiced. At the beginning, he was very excited with me because he never had a companionship like me. And after two months, he started changing. He wanted to finish our relationship, even though this was hurtful for him, in order to make a family, to start a family. He could see how much I loved him. I appreciated him and I wanted him. He didn't care. All he cared about was his wishes. He never introduced me to his family. He lives with his mom, who is an old woman. And in the same building, his uh, sister resides with her husband. Uh, they are married for many years. They don't have children and they are very happy but he doesn't take any example from them that they are happy without kids. This man lost his father when he was a teenager and this made him to be very connected with the rest of the family. And this maybe also 
left him some issues if he didn't go in, in therapy. If you have um, mourning and mourning at such a, a delicate uh, age, like teenage years, and you go on therapy, then you can get over it. But if you have uh, unprocessed mourning and unprocessed trauma and you don't go to therapy, it could burden you for the rest of your life. We split up for two months and then we were again together. Sometimes we had sex, and sometimes we were just friends when we were back together. I could not stand this, this ambiguity. But because my mother died, I wanted to have contact with him because I was very, um, very weak and I needed connection. This summer we were together again as a couple, but this lasted only for a few days because something happened again and we, we, we finished our relationship. I gave him space and time with no contact so as to think, to decide, while I was in a huge um, torment. So you tormented yourself so as to give him space and time to think. I'm going to say right now and know that it's not a good idea to torment ourselves so as not to express our feelings because somebody who is not sure if he or she wants to be with us has ambiguity. Express yourselves, express your feelings. And if they can't take it, then it finishes earlier and you have less heartache. Because if a story starts from the beginning and the one of the two has ambiguity and they are not sure and they have second thoughts and blah, 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 by uh, showing patience and by giving them space and time, you waste your valuable energy. My opinion, of course. We were back together as friends uh, this um, since October. Of, and he also uh, had coronavirus. And all this time that he was, uh, uh, he was, um, he was a patient with coronavirus, we spent it talking on the phone for three, four, up to six hours a day. And as he always said, we were just friends. Until one day, I got bored of it. I got so angry that uh, I wasted my time and my, I had so many expectations and he was in his own world. Today, 26th of December 2020, I wrote him this farewell email, knowing that our convictions, our stereotypes, our social stereotypes are like um, a tomb which puts us in a box so that we cannot think and we cannot act freely. Thank you for reading this email. Now be a little patient to read my farewell to my ex. Okay. Today is the 26th of December 2020 and we haven't spoken since two weeks ago. I've never waited that you, I will never expect it that you would choose not to wish me happy birthday on my birthday week ago and not to wish me Merry Christmas on, the Christ on Christmas Day. You chose silence. Silence that was not just silence. It was a very loud indifference. You uh, showed your disrespect for me and you took a decision by yourself which hurt me a lot. You haven't thought that even now you could give me a little bit of joy knowing that I'm all alone this special Christmas that we all go through. Quarantine Christmas. Pandemic Christmas. For me, this is one reason. Uh, for me, this is one reason more because I'm alone with a dog in the house without my man, without my dog that passed away, without the choice to be with families and with, my extended, with friends and my extended family. I'm really shocked by your attitude. You do whatever you can in order to provoke me, to delete you definitely from my memory, from my heart, from my life. You hurt me. A while ago, I lighted the fire on the fireplace and I went to sit on the sofa to watch my series. 
I noticed while I was having my coffee, I'm having tea right now, not a very good representation, but it looks like coffee. I noticed while I was sipping my coffee that uh, the fire did not lit up well and I realized I should get up and maybe put some more um, small wood so as to make the fire alive. And I, I left it for later since my series was very interesting. And I was telling myself, I'm going to get up in a while, in a while, in a while. And as long as I was waiting, I was devoted in watching my series. And then suddenly, I see a huge flame to come out of the fireplace and a lo many more smaller flames to light the living room. Etzik Safnika in Greek it means all of a sudden, without expecting it. The fire went on all of a sudden. This was the symbol that inside me kept me all this time near you. I was thinking that one day you would realize what I came to do in your own life and to our lives. I gave you lots of opportunities to feel it, to think about it, and to process it in your brain. What was my purpose of me being in your life and what was the spiritual purpose of our relationship? Unfortunately, no result and a lot of wasted time. In this time, I had hope, faith, huge love, and a lot of expectations. You had the most of all I have dreamed about the man I would spend my life with. But finally, you didn't want this so much as I do. And this, I was very late to admit. You wouldn't dare to do something so extreme, so different from what you have as, um, as your uh, prototype until some time ago. And I was unlucky to this. If we lived in another country with another way of thinking, it would be the last thing to have in your mind that I'm older than you. You wouldn't care what your, your mother would say, what your sister would say. I know inside me that I could have made you a happy and full person. I had dreamed to adopt two children to adopt children, maybe. To adopt a couple of children so that we make our happiness full. And to feel like people, that they do a very important social work. It would also be a good thing for the society. And it would be like this, in my eyes, in my way of thinking, not in your eyes. I loved you deeply and sincerely, and I was able to try a common life without any suppression, um, with a lot of, um, of freedom in your own wills, but in my own wills. Today, I want to fare well you. I want to tell you goodbye, my dear ex. I want to tell you that I'm sorry so sorry that you have been blind to see who would you have next to you. And I feel a lot of injustice for this happening in my life. And I was so upset and I felt so much rejection. But I also left, I also felt uh, uh, a lot of inspiration and hope. And I dreamed another life happier, better than the one I had. You were not my chance. You are not the person to dream with me. You are not the person that would give up his convictions to follow a road of joy and full devotion and love, fully, devo fully devoted love. I don't know why, why all this I should have um, discovered after a lot of tears, after the pain of rejection. I don't, after one why, that even now I cannot answer. Why? Why? I don't know why you came in my life and I cannot say for certainty that I took a lesson and that I needed this lesson. I needed a person to tell me, don't worry, I'm here, nothing else. I just wanted you to love me and to have common dreams. 
I don't care about money. I don't care about social class. I don't care about external appearances, not even age. My heart was thirsty for that flame that would give life to my own flame and we will uh, light up together the fireplace of our life. Every day I light the fireplace up because it keeps me company. I look at the flames and maybe this way my own flames are, uh, keeping, uh, are kept lit up because they never stop to be alive and to warm my heart and my body. I don't want this flame I have inside me that motivates me to be a pe better person, useful person and happier person to go away. I don't know if all these words I wrote to you give um, a specific image of how I feel right now, but I had a need to write them down, to stay in time, to remember how it was my 2020 Christmas. I feel a lot of gratitude that I can feel, laugh, cry, dream, being able to survive, not just to survive, not just to, to live, but to uh, live with uh, a realization of my life, even when I'm up, even when I'm down. To have people in my life that they really care about me and they love me, a wonderful dog that loves me, a wonderful house I stay in. I feel gratitude for all the little things I have achieved, for, all, for everything that I, I have in my life, for, every, for all the blessings and all the small moments that make my day, my thought, my life. I will never stop smiling, even in my biggest, darkest night. Music will be like a soft blanket giving me warmth in every step and my biggest company will be the movies and the books. I grew up this way and I will continue this way. Somewhere in this, uh, in this road of life, I will have my own spot that will take colors, it will smell beautifully, it will be creative and it will breathe. Sorry, because the translation is from Greek to English uh, on the spot, so it's not such a good translation. I will believe in life, the gift that was given to me, and I will be grateful forever for everything that I achieved in my life, or everything that life gave me. I will watch people carefully, nature, the persons, the beings, and the uh, objects that they have chosen to be around me. I will take care of the people and objects around me, and I will go step to step to whatever my life uh, brings me. I am, I am open to surprises and gifts. I'm even open to failures. I, had, I have overcome too many difficulties until now, and the moment that I say, I say a farewell to my difficulties brings a lot of uh, joy, a big smile in my face, and relief, and an internal pride because I made it either because some hand was there, either because I finally have a lot of strength inside me and, can, and I can cope. I am strong and very sensitive, together. This is my combination. This is the best combination, strong and sensitive. The best combination ever of a living human being who is alive. I am made of very strong materials that sometimes time and difficulties make them uh, weak, but this is not forever. This is just for a long, uh, a small period, and I can I can uh, um, uh, make myself better by working because I have very steady um, roots that my parents, my teachers, and the people who really love me gave me roots. I love life, and I will fight for every drop of it. This is the farewell to her ex. My dear ex, farewell this Christmas. I was uh, very um, impressed by this email because I've been following this woman's life story for two years now. 
um, we had dedicated one TV show um, when I had my daily TV show on uh, Cypriot television we made the uh, we made a we dedicated TV show on her previous letters that was about having low self-esteem and feeling lonely and how she could grasp life in her hands at the age of 53 I think she was back then two years ago and um, I'm really proud of her honestly I'm really proud of her because I recognize in her writing a stronger person a wholer person and a person who has a strong purpose in life and she knows who she is and she doesn't allow anything and anybody to make her succumb and feel hopeless and lose um, her purpose in life my dear ex a christmas farewell why did this man came in your life why did you come into his life i think at this point it's easier for us to um, observe and try to make hypotheses why you got into his life. Obviously, you got into his life to give him a choice. You wrote very well, and very wisely, to give him a choice whether to follow his feelings and to follow the gift that life gave him, because real love is a gift. Real connection is a gift having similar ideas and enjoying life in the same way and having all this sexual and erotic chemistry is also a gift. You cannot find sexual chemistry easily. Hmm? There are too many, too many parameters to compose sexual and erotic chemistry. So it's not so often to find, I can understand what you mean by your writing, to find a person that you, you click in this area and uh, the truth is that once you had such a full uh, romantic relationship and your sexual chemistry was top, then uh, you can never forget how it is. And for you, my dear, I am sure that you will find similar and even bigger sexual, uh, sexual chemistry in the future. I'm not sure about him. I'm not sure. I hope that he will because even though, though he appeared to be so coward and so self-centered and so non-communicative, he's still a person and we wish him the best. But wishing for somebody the best is not enough. He needs to work with himself and with his feelings and to appreciate life and appreciate moments and sacrifice. Sacrifice, not sacrifice big things. Open your mouth, man. Tell her, I love you, I like you. I feel a lot of sexual chemistry with you. I'm so happy being with you, but I want to have a family. Would you adopt with me? But maybe his heart was not big enough to adopt a child. I can totally, totally, totally imagine myself adopting a child and loving them to death. I was, um, I was immature enough to have children in a very young age. I gave birth to my son who was only when I was only 22 years old and I gave birth to my daughter when I was um, a few months before becoming 25 years old but and I love my children dearly I love them so much so much I love them more than I was loved growing up and this is too much <laughs> because even though sometimes you my usual viewers you know my my uh, I have a small complaints with my from my childhood, like everybody does. But I am really grateful for having wonderful parents, and for me it was a purpose in life to love my children more, more, more. And loving them more doesn't mean to be um, to be um, controlling in their lives or to 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 have any kind of uh, emotional emotional uh, complications with them, but just love them and want them to be happy. And I said, as I said earlier, I was immature enough or impulsive enough, or that was the plan of my life to be a mother very early on in life. But later in my life, I'm 45 years old now, I've met, I've met so many children I would love to adopt. I feel that I have so many spiritual children. You know who you are. You know who you are. You write emails to me and you, and you address me, mom. 
these were young uh, teenagers that were um, my clients that we had therapy together young uh, children and uh, teenage children that we were in group therapy together people i met through life um, through um, uh, my youtube channel and my email and the tv show i have come to have met so many of you younger than me of course that i would love to adopt you adopt you i would love to be your man and i would love you i st- I, I love you you know that i love you but i would love you as strongly as I love my biological children. Because love is not about blood cells, it's not about genes. Love is about feelings, it's about spirit. Love comes not from the heart, from the soul. So since your ex did not even consider adopting a child, I don't think he was capable of love. You know what happened to you maybe? I don't know, I'm making hypothesis here because um, this is a YouTube channel, and this is a video blog, this is um, an opportunity to talk about feelings and talk about relationships and analyze your story, but this is not a diagnosis and this is not therapy. I can, ju- I can, hypo- I, I can have the hypothesis that you are such a loving woman, you're so full of life, you're so full of sensitivity and power that you were able to make this environment. You produced this. You produced the loving environment. You produced the sparkles. You lit up the flames. Some of us, we have so much psyche inside. We have so much feelings, so much intense feelings. And they call us hypersensitive. You have some emotional issues. We made this uh, video blog in Greek last week about hypersensitivity. That is mistaken to be a vulnerability or uh, an ailment, whereas it is strength. Sensitive people can have a broad range of emotions and they can lit up a fireplace, they can lit up a relationship, they can give life to meaning to, to people who are, who are like dead and they were like miserable, and they were like crying their destiny and feeling that, oh, I don't have much luck in my life, oh, like your ex, I'm 38, I'm 39, I'm living with my old mother, I haven't had a family yet. I don't have, I'm not so successful financially, socially, whatever. Oh, I'm unlucky. And then one person walks into your life and she's full of life and she lit up your face and she gives you so much energy and you are so happy. But you have this blockage in your brain because you are Greek, because you are um, a very, how should I put it? Old way of thinking, you are very conservative and you think that a woman who is 17 years older than you is a bad match for you. My dear, how do you know how many years you will live? Both my grandmothers lived, outlived their husbands 25 years. Both of them. Both of them. My father's mother and my mother's mother, they lived as a widows for over 20 years. I think my mother's mother outlived my grandfather for uh, 25 years and my father's mother outlived my grandfather for 20 years. How do you know, how on earth do you know that you will die later than your, your, your uh, uh, partner? How on earth do you know that you are fertile? How on earth do you know that you could have children biologically? Maybe you can't. And it's no big deal. Honestly, I'm telling you, I've had biological children. I love them to bits. I adore them. They mean everything to me. But I also love so many other people that I haven't given birth to. And they can love so much more, so many more. And all of us, we can love everybody. Love is free. Love is to give around. Love is to circulate. Love is to light up our lives. Love is not to be stingy of it. You are stingy of love, my dear. You are her dear ex. You are stingy in love department. So by not realizing it, maybe, you took a very important decision in your life. Not to listen to your feelings not to listen to your gut instinct and follow your fears. You chose your fears, live with your fears. Enjoy them. As for you, my dear, that you wrote the email, and as for anybody else who feels that uh, you uh, you are male and the farewell to your ex is uh, something that touches their soul because they had similar experiences, you are so lucky. You are so lucky. 
You are so lucky that you are alive and you are really alive. You are so lucky you can feel. You are so lucky you can feel love. You can feel excitement. You can feel sorrow. You can feel joy. You can feel um, rejection. You can feel all the range of feelings. You are so, so lucky. You are so good. You are very good. You are excellent because you are alive and keep being alive. Your mother left this earth. You lost your mother. When we lose an important person in our lives, we get shattered. It's a, it's a loss. It's a huge loss. And this destabilizes us. Maybe this was the reason that you gave so many opportunities to this dear ex of yours. He's not dear to me, <laughs> so I cannot feel it. I cannot feel that he's dear to me. Maybe if I had sexual chemistry with him like you had, maybe I would feel some good feelings about him. But just listening to the story, I don't feel any any specific positive feelings. I don't feel any negative, but he's irrelevant to me. You are so relevant to me because I can see life inside you, life inside your eyes, life inside the eyes of your soul. I wish you to remain alive. And I'm promising to you that since you live your life like this, your life will, will always be full. Either you are single, either you are well partnered, either you are with other people or either you are alone. This beautiful email you wrote to me today and you made my boxing day. You honestly made my boxing day. I just finished the live video on my channel this morning and then your email came and I was like, oh! A fire lit up in me, in my eyes and in my brain and in my soul and I felt warmth inside because it was a person alive writing to me and talking to me and I can see you are much better. You cannot see the lessons now, you will see them in the future. I'm sure that this experience has been very, very, very beneficial for you and your email is the proof. You cannot feel it now, now you feel sad, now you feel the loss. We have this ducking quarantine Christmas. It's difficult for all of us. I said I was with people yesterday, but I was just with a few people I meet in the new place I live now. I was not with my extended family. I was not with my friends. It was also difficult. For everybody, it was difficult. For everybody who spent quarantine Christmas, it was difficult. But you had so much inspiration and so many feelings inside. So enjoy your life, honey. Enjoy yourself. Allow yourself to be vulnerable. Allow yourself to be sensitive. Allow yourself to be strong. And in the future, when you will meet again somebody, do not, do not close your mouth. Do not stay silent in order to give space and time to somebody to think if they want you. If they think, if they want you or not, they don't have enough feelings. We need fuel to go in life and the fuel for a relationship to go on is feelings feelings and inner strength strong people cannot be much with weak people i will have no problem with weak people they can be weak they can find other weak people and do their matchings together but strong people belong with strong people this is a good match this is a high match you know i wrote this very spoken of book the Indian book Kama Sutra, from the original, the translation from the original uh, book to English, and it's a beautiful book. It's only one, one or two chapters that talks about sex. sex. Mostly, it's the philosophy of ancient India about uh, love relationships and marriages, and it says that some people they can have high connections because they are highly compatible, and some people can have low connections because they are not so compatible. Strong people belong with strong people. Weak people belong with weak people. If you are a strong person listening to this video, try not to connect with weak people. You do not belong with a weak person. If you are a weak person listening to this video, please do yourself a favor. Start therapy to make yourself stronger so that you can belong with strong people and enjoy life. Because in order to enjoy life, you need to be strong. You need to be courageous. You need to be alive. You need to be able to change. I wish you, everybody in 2021, to become stronger, wiser, and uh, being able to protect yourself more from cases like this 
of wasting our time with people that we do not belong with. Kiss you, everybody. Bye. See you on New Year's Day. Bye.